So before we start talking about spinal decompression or progest or chiropractic or really any treatment uh, option, we really need to know what, what the actual injury is. And so neck or back pain can come from uh, a thousand different sources. Uh, but primarily what we see are uh, neck or back injuries that relate to either an issue with uh, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, or the disc. Um, let's talk a little bit about the disc itself because our spinal decompression program is designed specifically for back or neck pain that we can directly attribute to some sort of a disc lesion. So what is a disc lesion? So uh, if we can take a little close up here, the, the disc is a uh, shock absorber, if you will, that is placed in between two vertebrae, two bones. Um, it allows for ample range of motion while still protecting the spinal cord, which rests right behind that disc, okay? And then out the side of the vertebra run the nerve roots. So in a healthy state, that disc is a really tough structure surrounded uh, in, inside or uh, encasing this gel-like substance. And it's that gel-like substance, that nucleus, that allows us to pivot and move around in a lot of different directions. Uh, the disc itself doesn't have a direct blood supply, so it kind of feeds on surrounding tissues. But in its healthy state, it's nice and tall, which gives us plenty of room for that nerve to exit, uh, as well as uh, having this kidney bean shape. It's not a circle or an oval. It's this kidney bean shape, and this little concavity here, again, just allows for more room for that spinal cord uh, to traverse through. Okay? So one of the diagnoses people are given is a, a disc bulge. Uh, what that signifying is that that kidney bean shape it has lost its structure, so it begins to expand out. Like after a good meal or your stomach can kind of expand over your belt, uh, very similar to that. And what that can do is uh, narrow or stenose, that's a term they like to use, stenose or narrow the spinal canal where that spinal cord runs uh, or the foramen or the hole where the nerve root exits, okay? Um, the disc balls can come and go, uh, you know, the more pressure, if you think of these discs like water balloons, the more pressure you put down on them, the more they expand out. And we'll get into that when we look at our, uh, uh, our exercise rehab program. But uh, the disc bulge, the nucleus, that gel-like substance is still, still contained. So the, if you think of it as a jelly donut, the jelly is still inside the donut. Um, the, the next, uh, you know, if we triage this, sort of the, the next severity is the disc protrusion. And what that is, excuse me a second, it's when that nucleus or that, that center gel has gotten to the edge of the the disc itself. It's still contained, but now it's it's right on the outer edge. Um, this is a little more advanced. It's not a true herniation. In order for that to be a true herniation, that gel or that substance in there has to actually exit the disc. But it can still be painful and it can still present the same symptoms, okay, which can be localized back pain. It can be uh, shooting or radiating back pain. Uh, it's usually described as a sharpness, uh, you know, in certain movements. Um, but in a, in a disc protrusion, that nucleus is still contained. Now, in the worst case scenario, we have a true disc herniation. Let me grab a model of that. In the true herniation, that nucleus, that substance, has actually exited the disc. Um, in this case, it's still, uh, it's still attached. Uh, and this can lay you know, directly onto the spinal cord or onto the nerve root. Either way, in a true herniation, there's pretty consistent pain. Unlike in a disc bulge, in some cases even a disc protrusion, where the pain can kind of come and go, you know, you have good weeks and bad week, weeks, or, or good days and bad days. Uh, in a true herniation, they're pretty much all bad days. And there is usually ridiculous shooting pain down into the extremities, and into the legs, into the hips, into the buttocks. Um, so, and then there's even a step beyond this where that extruded piece of material can break off uh, and, and create this free floating fragment. Um, in those cases, pretty much the only way to get those out is through surgical intervention. They actually have to you know, open up the back uh, oftentimes remove uh, or cut open and remove a piece of the bone and then fish it out of the spinal cord. You don't want it to get to that point. So anyway, so now we know that there's a difference between disc bulge, disc protrusion, and disc herniation. Um, all of them can create 
similar, uh, similar findings, similar symptoms, you know, sharp back pain, shooting pain down to the leg, uh, numbness. And uh, it, it's our job um, as clinicians to determine you know, where your case falls. Um, an MRI is really the gold standard of how we make that determination. Uh, so through the MRI and also orthopedic findings, if we can make a determination that the back pain is directly attributed to that this problem, well, that's the uh, that's one of the steps in determining candidacy for a spinal decompression program.